Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 167th episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 14th of March and I'm recording this on Monday the 13th. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. After two episodes of Sector Spotlight looking at longer term trends in seasonality and price trends on the monthly charts, I'm going to talk you through what's happening in current rotation in asset classes and sectors at the moment. We'll be looking at the relative rotation graphs on the weekly and the daily timeframes side by side to assess the interaction of the tails and then look at some of the individual price charts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. After looking at seasonality and monthly charts, it's now time to dive a little bit deeper into what's actually going on into the markets and look at the relative rotation graphs for we're starting with asset classes. Um, what's the impact of all that stuff that's going on in the financial sector with the crypto market plunging and then coming straight back up uh, basically today um, on Monday when I record it. So um, let's have a look. On the left hand side we have the weekly RRG and on the right hand side we have the daily. So if we, if we start on the weekly then there is obviously one tail that, <clears throat> that really stands out and that is uh, Bitcoin. A uh, really powerful move into the leading quadrant. And if you look at the daily it's quite the opposite. It's like it's that big rat tail moving straight into the lagging quadrant. Um, and that's you know when you compare a volatile asset like uh, Bitcoin or crypto in general with much slower moving assets as stocks and bonds and corporate bonds etc. You can get these um, um, really powerful opposite moves. So how are we going to deal with that? Now <clears throat> as always the longer term picture is the major trend. That's very important. So I'm sticking with that long term long tail on the weekly that's powering into that leading quadrant. That's the leading trend. And obviously we had um, with the fallout of um, some of these crypto banks and service, service providers um, last week and in the weeks before, people got a, bit, a little bit scared and sold off a lot of crypto and Bitcoin got hurt quite severely actually. Uh, and that's causing that, that big red tail into the lagging quadrant. And the problem is that VBINX is a data series that's updated only end of day. So while I'm recording this, I'm looking at uh, prices that were updated up to last Friday. So the weekly chart is the uh, says ending is actually the week ending of month, the beginning Monday, March the 6th. So it's updated through the end of that week. And that week started on March 6th and it's updated until March 10, which is the daily that you see here. Now, if we were, uh, let me. Let me just try to explain that to you. If I'm going to ignore all the other asset classes, I'm going to take this away and we're going to put in um, an asset, a, a benchmark which is updated until today. Then you will see the difference. This is what you see here. So this is the result of um, the weekend because crypto is trading 24 seven, the weekend and um, today's price action, which was actually very, very strong for Bitcoin. So you can see the uh, the move right back up. And that is that is what I wanted to show you, because this if this continues and we'll look at the Bitcoin chart in a minute, um, this is going to support that long tail into the leading quadrant on the weekly RRG. So we got Bitcoin out of the way and I'm going to toggle these tails off to actually get a better handle on what's going on. Uh, with these other asset classes because crypto is quite disturbing on those rotation graphs. So here we have the, the again the weekly and the daily and let's start with the US dollar. Um, it is actually inside lagging on the weekly and it's going through 
a rotation through leading uh, on the daily. And I think that's ac exactly what is going on. We had a um, weakness of the US dollar going forward. We had a, uh, a jump up from that long term. I'll show you the chart in a minute from that very long term um, resistance level, which is now turning back as support. And it's quite in limbo, especially when you start to look at the euro dollar chart, which is what I prefer to look at because that is the one on one really tradable um, um, currency pair. If we look at commodities, now we've got GSG and DJP here um, in lagging on the weekly. That is that is relative weakness versus VBI and X and on the daily they went through sort of a relatively good week, but you can see that GSG is already rolling over and so is DJP. So the commodities are, uh, I th I'm, I'm afraid because I thought they were like in this really long term turnaround, but it got weaker and weaker and weaker. And if you look, if we're going to look at the individual charts, you'll see that um, these charts actually don't look that good. Now, Commodities, uh, sorry, uh, stocks and bonds, obviously super important. So here is SPY rotating <clears throat> back upward on the weekly. Uh, actually a very strong rotation because it came from leading through weakening and then straight back up. We know that that's a strong rotation. And the opposite goes for government bonds, which were um, moving up and then rotated inside, improving and rolled over downward. Now, if we look at the daily, then we got the sort of opposite picture because SPY actually moved into lagging. Uh, you see a little bit of a hiccup here and then the last two days, because this is actually today's price action or yesterday's when you look at this. Um, I think, I still think that the, um, the picture for SPY is kind of weakening. It's, it's, it's certainly not doing as expected and um, I don't, I, we need to actually have this tail pick up rapidly to support the weekly tail for SPY on the weekly RRG. And um, they're, they're both government bonds and SPY are very close to the benchmark. And that's what makes a, um, a super strong assessment quite difficult in terms of relative strength. Um, and we will also see that when you compare stocks and bonds, SPY and IEF together, uh, they're back in a trading range. So, it's, so there is a big battle going on between stocks and bonds at the moment um, for victory. And, and right now it's quite undecided, uh, I think. Let's take a look at some of these individual charts because I think that makes a lot more sense. So here is that, here is that US dollar chart where we had that strength, we had the big dip, and then we were bouncing off that um, su big support level. We were actually taking out some levels here, and now we're coming down again. On this weekly, it's not that visible, but here is some dollar weakness going on. And that shows better on the euro dollar chart. So here's the weekly euro dollar chart. Um, and obviously when this goes up, it is weakness for the US dollar. It's, it's euro strength and US dollar weakness. And it looks as if we're like, putting in a low here and we're starting to move up. And that is difficult to assess because we're in, we're in the neighborhood of such a super long term uh, support area. So if we're going to get more dollar weakness, I would say that, that for the time being, this recent low here, and that corresponds with the recent high in euro dollar, that is, that is a very important resistance level for euro dollar. Um, if we take that out, then I think there is a serious trend change at hand. We're not there yet, but this thing, this, this little bottom here, and if you look at the daily, it looks like a nice double bottom. Um, and that's a, that's a, a good support level now. Uh, we're, we're probably going to see euro dollar work its way higher. Uh, first to 108 and maybe to 110 and then we'll have to assess it again because in that 110 area that's where things are really going to get um, exciting if you wish because uh, that's where the market is going to um, make a real decision. 
If we go to SPY, then <clears throat> obviously that is not doing as we expected. We had that break here. Looked like a new trend was uh, emerging. That's now definitely broken, uh, for sure. So the next support level that we're watching is 375, 374, 50, 375. Uh, and you can see that the market is neither overbought or oversold. It is coming out of a sort of long decline. And the question is whether we're going to take out that previous low. So right now, the series of higher highs and higher lows is still in place. Um, 375 is going to be the uh, uh, decision point for SPY. Uh, if we break that, then all bets are off to the upside and we're back into a sort of sideways direction for SPY. And we can see that here on the daily, a little bit more granular. Happened already last week and you can see that here is that cluster of lows around 375 that we actually need to, um, to keep an eye on. Let's quickly move to uh, the bond markets because there um, the rally is very clearly visible. We got golfed pushing against resistance. If we take out 23.50 in golfed, that's probably the trigger for a move up towards the next area here, which is around 24.50. And then if we look at IEF, that's the seven to 10 year segment on the yield curve, then you can see that it is doing quite the same. Uh, around 100, 199, 100, that area is where there is a lot of resistance uh, for IEF. If that's taken out, then we can see uh, bonds moving up, yields going down. And you can see here the relative strength versus VBI and X is a, is a very, that's why this, this stock uh, bond ratio is, is so stable over the last year. There's not much going on. And every time you think it's breaking out, it's breaking right back. And that's what we're seeing again right now. So right now, there's not a lot of uh, definite movement uh, in terms of preference of stocks versus bonds. It's actually back into that trading range. <clears throat> and that's the SPY IEF ratio. Um, my previous chart, I had that sort of little triangle annotated here and we had that break upwards. It's now right back into that trading range. So not much going on. It's, it, it looks as if we still I need to spend more time in that trading range. If you look at the RSI, that's pretty much going nowhere. Um, so no, no real preference for stocks over bonds. It looks like short term, we may be heading for the lower boundary of that uh, area, which means a preference for bonds over stocks in the near term. Longer term, doesn't really matter. You're probably best off using VBI and X or 60-40 benchmark in your portfolio and um, you'll be fine. DJP, so commodities, DJP, here you see that this is already broken below support. Um, and there is a, this is sort of a descending triangle that's, that's working its way lower. You see all these highs coming in at lower levels. So sellers every time uh, are happy to sell at lower levels. And the support to the buyers in this area here, around 32, um, just gave up. Um, and we're now below that support level. We're holding up above this previous peak here around 31, but that's only a minor support level. This is way more important and the upside potential is definitely a lot less than the downside risk. And here is the relative strength of DJP versus VBI and X, and that is uh, pointing lower as well. If you look at GSG, uh, not as far yet as DJP, but you can see the same picture. Um, lower highs coming in, meaning that there is a lot of selling pressure every time at lower prices. Sellers are happy to get rid of their uh, commodities. And for um, GSG right now, 19 and a half seems to be the support area. If that gives way, obviously we can see an acceleration lower uh, for commodities. But in general for commodities, uh, upside potential, limited downside risk, uh, pretty big. Now the big mover last week and again this week, that's Bitcoin. And I think we've pointed out that resistance area around 25,000 a few times already. That's now really coming, becoming very important because last week we had, you look at this one week dip here. We'll look at the daily in a minute, but that was like one week, a couple of days. And now we're right back up to that resistance area. And this, this may seem um, a small move and maybe in terms of Bitcoin it is, but it's 5,000 US dollars. So this is 25 and then that resistance area is around 30,000, 29, 30,000 US dollars. 
This could turn into becoming a very major low in Bitcoin and maybe crypto in general. Uh, if we take out 25 and if possible 30, then you can see that there is a lot of new upside potential will be unlocked for Bitcoin and usually altcoins, crypto market in general will follow suit. If we look at that on the uh, daily, then you can see how vicious this move has been. Um, this is when um, uh, crypto got in trouble last week and that lasted like one, two, three days. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're back into that trading range, back above that 21 and a half um, former support. Well, it didn't even act as resistance, to be honest. And we're right back in there and we're now pushing against 25,000. If crypto, if Bitcoin can take out 25,000 and a little bit to the upside, I think there is a lot more and the next target will be 30,000 for Bitcoin. How did all that volatility last week play out on the relative rotation graphs? We have the US sectors here, weekly on the left, daily on the right. And if we start on the, on the weekly, um, for me, what really stands out is the fact that technology continues almost in a straight line into the leading quadrant, which is really strong. So it means that it's gaining uh, on both the JDK RS ratio as well as the RS momentum scales. Uh, that makes technology right now one of the maybe the best sector in the universe, which is surprising or strange. I don't know how to say it. Um, with the weakness that we see in the S&P 500 at the moment. But technology really stands out. The other thing that um, I keep my eyes on is the weak rotation for the defensive sectors. So for uh, staples, healthcare and utilities, that rotation is also still going on in the weekly time frame. So the longer term trends are definitely still there. <clears throat> um, Energy is joining these defensive sectors inside the lagging quadrant uh, as of today or, or yesterday. And we have got industrials and materials inside weakening and moving uh, further lower. And here is financials. That is obviously what everybody wants to see. So here's financials. And um, this is last week's move, uh, which is pointing towards lagging. It's still inside weakening, but pointing towards lagging. And if we take a look at how that looks on the daily, then you can see that there is obviously a lot more granularity. And um, so this is Monday, so Monday the 13th, and this is Friday's move, Thursday, Wednesday. So you saw the, the rotation while it was moving into leading and almost immediately started to roll over. And then on March 7, we started to head, March 8, we move into the lagging quadrant, and then 9, 10, so that's Thursday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and this is Monday. You see that move in there, and that's in line with what we see on the weekly. Uh, and, you know, this points to more weakness in the financial sector. I'm not sure whether that's going to be for the entire financial sector. I, I'll, I'll want to look at the individual stocks inside the sector. Uh, because maybe there are a few good names to find there uh, to pick up at depressed prices. This is the rotational picture. So we've got uh, discretionary still moving strong inside the improving quadrant. Despite the weakness that we see, uh, we've seen over the last two weeks, this is <clears throat> on the daily RRG, which you can see that's starting to slowly pick up a little bit of momentum again. Got to wait and see how that plays out. And communication services is interesting because that is pointing towards the leading quadrant and it just moved over into, into improving. So it could start to uh, support that, that weekly tail, which is inside leading, lost a bit of momentum, but still it's at a very high RS momentum level compared to the rest. And it's, um, it's the highest uh, reading on the RS ratio scale for the time being. So technology, communication services doing really well. Real estate rolling over, that is not a good story. And you can see that that is deep inside lagging and way, way low from the crossover into the, uh, on the right hand side. So that is not going to happen. So that is very dangerous. You gotta be careful with the real estate sector there. 
And what else do we have? I think we've had them all. So let's look at a few of these individual charts now. So here's communication services. And you can see that weakness. Uh, first, we saw that long downtrend in terms of route strength. We saw the beginning initial move, which is very good. And we're now resting at support and the price chart uh, and the raw route strength line is still working its way higher. So I'm going to judge this as a first temporary pause in terms of relative strength, both in price as well. Uh, and especially when uh, communication services can hold up at this level here, which is around 52. Uh, I think that that will help as a jumping board for communication services for a renewed move higher towards the 60 area. As I said, energy uh, crossing over into the lagging quadrant. Um, that's based on the RRG lines here. You can see how that uh, raw RS line is starting to just go lower and lower. And if we break that support level there, then uh, that's probably a trigger for an acceleration lower. But what was more worrisome is that we've sort of completed this double top here on the price chart and we're just resting above that rising support line. Um, that really needs to hold to keep that up and it doesn't even mean that we, that we won't see a lower relative strength. But in terms of price, uh, this line should hold up. If it breaks, then there is much more downside will be unlocked and that's obviously going to be a weak factor for relative strength as well. Now here is financials and here you saw this is last, last week's price bar and this is the price action uh, of yesterday, of Monday. And that is a broken chart. There's quite a bit of damage here, especially because of that long bar down. That's going to have a toll on the relative strength as well. And you can see how these RRG lines are pointing lower and that's going to push that tail on the financials uh, XLF uh, towards the lagging quadrant. So for the time being, financial is going to be, um, well, at least very limited upside potential. The downside risk for the sector uh, at the moment, I think, is limited towards 30 US. We're currently at 31.60. Uh, but if that breaks, then obviously that's going to be a big problem for, uh, the, for the financial sector. So keep an eye on uh, the area between 30, 31 probably, uh, and how that relative strength continues to behave itself. If you look at technology, as I said, one of the better sectors, if not the best sector, that relative strength line continues to move higher. That's pulling these RRG lines right up, pushing that tail into the leading quadrant. And on the price chart, you can see that we're holding up above that former high, which is now acting as support and is doing a really good job. Um, if we can take out 145 on XLK, that would be really good for the sector. And if 25% of the market cap is moving to the upside, that's usually also a good sign for the market as a whole. So um, let's wait and see if the strength in the technology sector can prevent SPY from really moving down. Now here are the uh, defensive sectors that we talked about. They're still moving into the lagging quadrant. They're still uh, showing weak relative strength. And as I, uh, we've, we've pointed that out a number of times already, um, with defensive sectors underperforming or in relative downtrends versus the market, that's, that's not a bad sign. It's usually a good sign for the S&P 500. And that situation is still in play. Um, it's making it difficult to read. I got to admit, it's difficult to sort of still see this while you see that the S&P is in trouble. But just look at the chart and you can see that there is still this, you know, lower highs, lower lows. You can see that trend line coming down. We broke support. There is a bit of a hiccup here in terms of our strength. But if you look at the RRG lines, that's a big rollover after that move higher. So that's still um, on, on a weaker move. And if you look at um, this is real estate. We talked about that already. That's that still moving over. That relative strength is breaking lower again. <clears throat> there is very little upside potential here for real estate. Um, the other defensive utilities, you can see that here is that steep downtrend. You can see that relative strength broke below previous support. The ROG lines are pointing lower. We're resting above 64. If utilities, if, if XLU um, breaks below 64, if that gives way, then there is a lot more downside and that's going to push utilities lower, but that's also going to push relative strength of utilities much lower. So that, that move out of defense 
is still ongoing despite the the weakness in the s p 500 despite what happened last week <clears throat> investors are not massively moving towards these defensive sectors maybe i've got to add yet to that sentence but as of now this is still moving lower relative strength is weakening and here is um healthcare you see the same picture you see that trend is still moving lower a little bit of a bounce last week yes but not massive and it's not it's definitely not strong enough to push that relative strength line back up and you see these rg lines moving lower so utility staples healthcare they're all still in that longer term trend to move lower in terms of relative strength and on the price charts they're on under pressure as well and then finally we got consumer discretionary uh, we had that first bounce higher a week week right now so what's very important for uh, consumer discretionary and this is the tail here is that it holds up let's say above 130 we're in a support area right now if we hold up here this can become a much nicer and longer base from where the sector can move higher but we need to stay above 130 uh, and that will eventually also help that relative strength line from con consumer discretionary uh, to hold here and to move higher. And this wraps up Sector Spotlight for this week. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please remember Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern on Stock Charts Television. You can catch the replays and watch previous shows on the Stock Charts YouTube channel or any of the on-demand channels. If you would like to engage in a conversation, you can do that in the comments under every video on YouTube or the discuss section on the RRG blog. Alternatively, find at RRG Research on Twitter, Facebook or LinkedIn or simply shoot me an email. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week for a new episode of Sector Spotlight. Same time, same place. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.